Another group that had a huge impact on World War II was women in American society. And women play a huge part in the war, just as they had done in World War I, but even probably in more profound ways. And if you take a look at this list, um, women played a number of different roles during the war. And if you look at this list and just kind of read off the different jobs, some of them that you probably have to Google to even figure out what they are, review this list of jobs and figure out which ones did women not do during World War II. And hit pause for a moment and take a look at those jobs. Okay, unpause. Now, if you crossed off any of those things, you are sexist because women played every single job on there they did during World War II. Every single job from taxi driver to traffic cop to meteorologist to astronomers to journalists, mathematicians, mechanics, so on, riveter, women played those roles. In fact, the most famous image of women during World War II is this image of Rosie the Riveter. And Rosie the River becomes the kind of icon of women workers during World War II. And at the time, it actually wasn't that big of an image, but today it has become one. Um, and Rosie the Riveter, you see her right there with that we can do it attitude, this kind of propaganda poster. Women play a role in war production. In fact, during World War II, over 6 million women enter the workforce for the first time. And suddenly now, here's a Norman Rockwell painting of Rosie the Riveter, a different kind of version of her. Women are doing jobs that for, for so long, men were just assuming that they could not do. And like I said, over 6 million women are entering the workforce for the first time, largely in defense work, but in other types of jobs. Because suddenly now, the men... The, the male labor force is gone fighting World War II, and so women are going to kind of enter in and fulfill those roles. Now, there's a lot of clips on YouTube. Google women World War II. You'll find a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and these are just different images of women playing those different roles that, that men assume because of sexism that they couldn't do, whether it be making munitions, making airplane parts, um building the pieces of the plane, women are doing these jobs and many, many more. Um, there's a huge outreach effort trying to get women into the factories. There's some great propaganda videos on YouTube of this. Women in the war, we can't win without them. And like I said, for the first time, six million women are, are doing jobs that were just basically not available before. And while women are doing these jobs, there is, of course, limitations to this. Women are not allowed to enter into supervisor or management positions. They're oftentimes paid less than their male counterparts. There is still, it's not a fairy tale story. Uh, but once again, women's role in World War II um, is, is enormous to the war effort. And once again, here is a real life Rosie the Riveter, a woman. Uh, in a factory doing riveting work, um, and that's a part of this story of World War II on the home front. This is an interesting image of an uh, actress, Veronica Lake. Um, sh her name's not important to remember, but one of the things was there was a lot of trainings of trying to get women to do, you know, to, to adjust to this new work life. Uh, and so in this particular image, she's supposed to be showing women, be careful with your long hair, you've got to, you know, protect yourself in the factories because because bad things could happen so these are the different jobs that women are playing during the war and along with others nurses you know receptionists secretaries for the war effort but once again when the war is over there is this perception that women are replacements they're only here for temporary fill-in substitutes and when the war is over Rosie the Riveter is supposed to go back into the household. And so this experience of working in the factory, this feeling of liberation was very short lived because when the war is over, there's this feeling that they're supposed to go back. And of course, this is not going to sit well with all women. In fact, what you're going to see is later on, especially in the 1960s, women's roles are going to be redefined as women increasingly uh, 
continue the struggle that previous generations had been doing. So know about Rosie the Riveter and the roles that women played during World War II. The last piece of this kind of World War II on the home front is the African American experience. And African Americans had a lot of different experiences during World War II. Like women, like Latinos, like different groups of people, they received new opportunities, especially in war industry. And once again, you have a propaganda poster showing United We Can Win. You've got the black worker and the white worker working together to, you know, win the war. And there is, just as there was during World War I, another great migration where a huge numbers of African Americans leave the South and go, especially to the Midwest, but also the North and even the West Coast. And once again, they're, they're leaving Jim Crow laws, remember from Plessy versus Ferguson, and there's this feeling like, okay, we're going to start over and there's opportunities in the North. And of course, the Jim Crow laws are a very, very serious reality, lynchings, the Klan, Jim Crow, Plessy versus Ferguson, all that stuff we've learned about in previous chapters. Now, moving north, there is not exactly a, a welcome, arms open uh, greeting to reach them. In fact, in certain cities, for example, in Detroit, especially, race riots occur where African Americans are beaten up by angry mobs of individuals. There was a resentment, you know, women, you know, coming into the factories was one thing, but now you have African Americans coming into the factories and coming into the neighborhoods. And because of tremendous racism, not just in the South, but also in the North, you have race riots occurring and you could see these kind of horrible images of these uh, beatings of innocent people. Here the cops are escorting man away as someone slaps him in the face people being actually dragged off of a trolley car as an angry mob is there so race riots were a part of this experience so while african americans are presented with these new opportunities there was still this tremendous racism in the united states and many americans um african americans basically start calling on a double victory campaign um, and this idea of a double V campaign kind of takes root in the African American community among civil rights organizations. And this idea of a double victory, victory at abroad, defeating the Nazis, the Axis powers, but also victory at home. And victory at home, this idea we have goals, and these goals include... Mexico, can't do it the whole the whole way through but victory against the enemy abroad we're going to defeat Hitler we're going to defeat the Axis powers we're going to win the African-American soldiers are going to serve very bravely in segregated units African-Americans are going to be segregated while fighting this brutal horrible enemy African-American soldiers once again are going to be segregated uh, in in units based upon race so while they're fighting and risking their lives you have this kind of racism going on on the battlefield. The other part is victory at home. Victory against racism and discrimination at home. So this double V campaign plays a huge role in, in, in the period of World War II. So for, for African Americans... You get new organizations formed. Probably the most famous and the most important one is CORE, the Congress of Racial Equality. And the Congress of Racial Equality is created in the 1940s, and they're basically taking on segregation head-on in the North. They are staging sit-ins at Chicago restaurants. They are protesting. you got these different images of people protesting segregation in schools, talking about freedom now. Congress of Racial Equality is formed, as well as the other organizations, the NAACP. And for the African-American community, World War II is kind of this, this boiling point becomes harder and harder to ignore the lack of civil rights when we're fighting this war once again. World War I, making the world safe for democracy. World War II, we're going to defeat this horrible enemy. And you have organizations such as CORE, and there's their 
official symbol making equality a reality, the Congress of Racial Equality, and you get people protesting. And dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to train all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! In fact, the NAACP continued to protest, you know, founded by W.E.B. Du Bois and others. CORE continues to add to this, and they're fighting against unequal pay. In fact, a lot of African Americans who, f who worked in war industries were paid less than their white counterparts. And it took a lot of pressure from African American and other civil rights leaders for Franklin Roosevelt to finally do something about it. They threatened to march on Washington, D.C. So Roosevelt was very slow in addressing the concerns of civil rights um, for the African American community. But fighting the old battles, Jim Crow laws, lynchings, and other important issues, you got an anti-lynching campaign taking place up here. So for World War II was a time of opportunity for groups such as Mexican Americans, women, African Americans, but it was also a time of intense racial discrimination and hostility and these tensions kind of bubble up during this time. Um, here's another great image of African American and white civil rights activists protesting the fact that African Americans were denied certain jobs um, and certain jobs were not open to African Americans and so you have this group protesting that fact. In fact, here is very plainly put, if Negro men can carry guns for Uncle Sam, surely they can drive milk wagons for Bowman Dairy. And Bowman, the company, was not allowing African Americans to, to be drivers at the same time that African Americans were spilling blood in places like France or in different islands in the Pacific. So, once again, this double victory campaign. Last group is, just kind of want to share, the Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee Airmen are an interesting group. They are the first African-American pilots, and there was a long story and a long history of African-Americans trying to get an opportunity to fly in the uh, military, and for very long there was all this racism that African-Americans couldn't serve, that they weren't smart enough or brave enough or couldn't follow the technical commands, uh, and with a long, long history behind it, eventually the Tuskegee Airmen uh, were granted the right to begin training and flying and served very honorably in World War II. And there's a, a movie about it, not a very good movie from what I hear, but uh, came out the Red Tail or something like that. So, Tuskegee Airmen. So, read about all the stuff and know about it.